When I first started switching to NeoVim, I basically tried to turn it into VS Code, installing all the plugins I could find. It was really powerful and kind of exciting, but it was also fragile. Over time, I realized that every plugin adds surface area that needs to be maintained, that needs to be configured and debugged when something breaks. Ultimately, I don't want my workflow to depend on something that might not always be there. The truth is, NeoVim doesn't need to be VS Code. It is a powerful editor in its own right out of the box and most of the time the core features can get you at least 80% of the way there. In my opinion, the extra 20% of efficiency are not always worth the extra dependency. So lately I've been simplifying my config and cutting back. Here are some of the plugins I removed and why. First I removed all AI plugins. I used the ChatGPT one for a while, Code Companion, and Avante. And Avante is actually one that I still highly recommend. It's amazing how they brought the cursor workflow directly into NeoVim. So if you're into cursor, you're not really missing much, but it did have some stability issues. Maybe that's also misconfiguration on my part, but it did crash a little too often for me. And when Claude Code came out and Gemini CLI, I found myself using those much more because they integrate very well into my workflow when using NeoVim with Tmux. So I can have NeoVim in one Tmux pane and the CLI tool in another pane. And I found that everything flows together very nicely. And of course, you are able to make use of the latest developments in AI much sooner if you stick to a tool that is developed directly by the companies who make the AI. And a CLI tool developed by Google or Anthropic is kind of unbeatable in terms of stability. I do want to give OpenCode a try though. It seems quite powerful and so far I've only heard good things about it. The next plugin is gonna get me into trouble. It's the Harpoon one that was developed by the Primogen. A lot of people love it and he swears by it. I installed it and I had it installed for some time, but I could never really fit it into my workflow. When I want to jump to different locations across the codebase, I usually just stick to built-in features like the jump list or Vim marks. And if I want to jump between different files simply, I just use the buffers feature in Telescope and have it sorted by recency. And if I want persistence, I simply create a Vim session and load it next time I open NeoVim. I don't know, maybe it's just me though, and I just don't understand what I'm missing out on. But uh, yeah, if you think I should keep it, let me know down in the comments below. Next, I'm removing all plugins that fall in the category of, I would call it as annotation-based navigation. So this is things like flash, hop, and leap. They basically annotate different locations, you type the annotation and you jump there. It's a cool idea, but I realized that I don't want my navigation muscle memory to be built around something that only exists because of a plugin. If it breaks or it gets archived like the hop plugin or I'm on a system that doesn't have it, I lose part of my workflow. The built-in Vimotions are already powerful enough and they will always be there, so I'd rather refine those than depend on an extra layer. The next plugin I'm removing is Bufferline. Bufferline creates this familiar tab bar that we know from other editors. But the thing is, in my workflow, it doesn't really add any value because I can already see the file name of the current buffer in the Lua line status bar. So far, I didn't really mind it because I thought maybe it makes my tutorials a little easier to follow. But recently I found that moving the Tmux status bar to the top looks kinda clean. But what doesn't look clean is having two layers of tabs at the top of the window. So the reason I'm removing it is not for any functional benefit, but it's mainly for aesthetic purposes. The next plugin I'm removing is Arial. Arial gives you this outline window of your code that allows you to navigate quite quickly between functions and different document symbols. It is also a very cool idea, but with a telescope plugin, I can do a document symbol search and basically get about the same workflow with a plugin that I have already installed anyway. So I found myself just sticking to Telescope and unfortunately Arial just didn't get enough screen time to justify keeping it around in my config. I'm also removing the Alpha NVim dashboard plugin. It looks kinda cool when you start NeoVim and you see this NeoVim pixel art and you see your most recently edited files. But in practice, when I start NeoVim, I just type in the file I want to edit directly or I started with the oil plugin, which is like this file explorer, and then open the file I want to edit this way. So while a dashboard plugin looks pretty cool, I found for my workflow it mainly adds bloat. Finally, there are two plugins that I'm still debating. The first one is the Vim Dadbot plugin. This is kind of like a SQL client for NeoVim. And recently I made a video about how I run SQL queries in NeoVim without any plugins. 
And I find for my workflow, this works kinda well. So I probably don't need the DadBot plugin anymore. And if I need advanced SQL features, I will probably still use an SQL IDE like DB or something like that. The other plugin I'm still a little bit undecided about is NeoTree. I know a lot of people don't see the value at all in file trees, including the Primogen. Why do you use file trees? I, I, I see no reason to use a file tree. Uh, exploring my code base, like even then, it, I, I have such a hard time with this as a, as a concept. Like exploring your code base with a file tree is kind of odd. But personally, I like to see exactly where all the files on my project are located. And especially when making tutorials, I found them quite useful to better explain the file structure of a project. And while I do have the oil plugin now, it is not really a replacement for a file explorer. Because in a file explorer, you can open multiple directories at once and see the files that are inside of them. The oil plugin is great to create a file structure or modify it, but it's not that great for exploring because you go into a directory and you can only see the files that are inside of that directory. So I use oil for modifications and I use NeoTree for exploration and illustration. But yeah, given that a lot of great engineers don't really see the value in file trees, maybe I'm missing something here. If you think I am, feel free to drop a comment down below. I'd be curious to know what I'm missing. To me, it seems that the Prime Engine and I have fundamentally different ways of thinking and our brains work in different ways. And different workflows, of course, work for different people. So no hate to any plugin, they are all amazing. They just happen to work for different people, different workflows at different points in time. And I really appreciate the work that all the plugin authors put into making the NeoVim ecosystem what it is today. Thank you so much for watching and Vim responsibly.